Hello everyone, welcome back. Let's do a little bit of shiny hunting for Minior. And we got a uh, good we got a Roto Hatch power. Uh you guys can't see the Roto Hatch power that we just got, but yeah, there's a good Roto Hatch. Uh, disable preview. Start replay buffer. There we go. Let's get going. But yeah, we're uh, we're doing a little bit of egg hatching today. So I, I reorganized my PC boxes last time, uh, well, after last time. So that way now we have a little bit better organization. And where the freak is that DS stylus I had? It was on here somewhere. Well, well, we'll figure it out later. Hey, Mr. Mesh, how you doing? Thank you very much, Temper, for the lurks. I'm doing okay. Imagine Pokemon like Bronze and Heavy Axe to Sci Shield Bash. What does Sly Shield Bash do again? <clears throat> what does Sly Shield Bash do again? Is it is it just it increases your defense when it's used? I, I don't really remember what the move does if I don't use uh Weird Deer or uh we we Weird Deer or what's its face? Uh Stantler, that's what it does. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, with that and, um... Yeah, with that and body press, that's kind of an interesting thing. Yeah, it's a bit of a thing. Oh my gosh, yeah, the audio. I, I, I forget how much this just destroys the audio. Is the audio, like, hiccuping from, like, the game audio, you guys? Or is it just my end? Because, like, I think it's just me, but I want to know. Okay, so it isn't just me, yeah. That's kind of the one issue uh, when it comes to this game. Is, well, when it comes to, you know, the, the DS, 3DS in general. I'm hopefully going to see you guys a little con this weekend. As cool as the DX or versus... Yeah, it, it's the X is silent. It's just Godzilla Kong, the new empire. Hey, Jade. Yeah, it, it's like how in um, Hunter Hunter, you know, Hunter X Hunter, the uh, the X is silent. Why do you not like Ultra Moon fake? What what did Ultra Moon do to you? Oh, I forgot to actually go uh, activate the Roto Hatch. What, what, what did Ultra Moon do? Yeah, let's go actually uh, activate a Roto Hatch power. Yeah, sometimes... So, I, I, I was doing a little bit of research for um, some videos, which... Can I... I again, I, I feel like I, I, I need to mention this again a oh, hundred bunch of times. It... It... Overjoys me. That I can I can say I'm doing research for a video, and the video I am doing research for is Godzilla videos. That is a special kind of joy. I have something which is a little Felt like I was watching a movie. Why did you have to get me addicted to Balloon Stars again? Love Balloon Stars. It's a great game. The funny thing is, even with all the cutscenes, it's still faster than a lot of the other Pokemon games. Like. The, the, the cut scenes I actually prefer to having to button mash through the the dialogue boxes. Because one thing you'll know about me is I don't like button mashing. It wears out the buttons and consequently destroys the lifespan of your DS. So if by having the cut scenes be removed... I need to press the A button half as many times. That doubles the lifespan of my DS. I, I, in my opinion, I'm okay with that. Because the, the thing is, the only thing that makes it feel longer, despite it actually being a lot shorter, is just you don't get the feedback. You do not get, like, that tactile feedback of being able to button mash the A button. But... Yeah, there's no there's no tactile feedback. So I just feel like I had the most dialogue in the tutorial so long. The funny thing is, if I remember correctly, you can actually skip Sword and uh, Sword and Shield's tutorial. 
Because, like, all you have to do is just catch a Pokemon before you get the tutorial thing, and you can literally bypass all of it. Because Leon sees, oh, you already caught a Pokemon. You already know what you're doing. Let's go. Which, I, which that's the best way of doing things. Where, if you just catch a thing on Route 1 before you get the tutorial, okay, no, no need for the tutorial. The funny thing is, the, the longest um, tutorial there is in any game is uh, the Johto games. You know, if, if you catch a Pokemon before you get the tutorial, you don't get it. Yeah, you, 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 if you just catch a Pokemon before you have the encounter with Leon, you don't have to, it doesn't make you go through the tutorial. The funny thing is, it's still shorter than Gen 2 in the Heart Gold Soul Silver remake tutorial. Because remember, for the tutorial in Heart Gold Soul Silver and in the Johto games, you need to go all the way to Mr. Pokemon's house. Pick up the mystery egg, walk all the way back, and then when you leave, when you go go all the way from Newbark Town to Mr. Pokemon's house, and then all the way back to Newbark Town, and then leave the thing after you've battled your rival, and then you get the catch tutorial. And then you can do your catch tutorial. That that is by far the longest tutorial of any Pokemon game, and I think it's like over an hour long. And that's just because I mean, even the older games, like back in I think what like Gen two, there were no running shoes. Don't get over the fact that JSP is a lot of up. Yep. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with BDSP having the button mashing thing. The main reason for that is you can get multiple controllers. Like, for me, I'm entirely okay with button mashing in a, a game system where I can literally get a new controller. But when it comes to a DS, I like to be conservative with my button presses because your game system has a finite number of button presses. You know, I mean, this Switch controller... You know, I can already feel the A button is becoming a lot less firm than the B button, the X button, the Y button, and even the B button. But, I don't care. Because it's this controller. You know, it's I, I can literally go out to my local Target and for like 20 bucks, buy a new controller. You know, I can buy a new pair of Joy-Cons. I can buy a new pair of anything. Whereas with the DS, you have one A button for the entire lifespan of that system. And if that A button wears out, you are absolutely beyond foobard. And I know this. Thank you very much, whoever subscribed. And the reason I know this is because my original DS, you know, old school, little tiny DS. Uh, my brother had the black DS, I had the white DS. Both of us absolutely destroyed our A buttons on those DSs. Like, it, it got to the point where... We basically, we could only play Pokemon games by going into the menu, going into options, and selecting L equals A. Because we just could not use the A button. It's the reason why I actually replayed Heart Gold and Soul Silver so much over Diamond or Platinum. Because in those games, you can use the little lower screen, uh, lower screen corner A button by tapping on the touch screen. You didn't need to use the A button because I couldn't use the A button. And so a game like this, where I actually never need to press the A button more or less, especially for a lot of those things, 
it saves a lot of A button a, a, a button presses, but it also saves the L button press, because again, even the L button will eventually wear out if you use it too often, and saves touchscreen presses, which again, that can wear away at the touchscreen eventually. You know, I think the thing that you know, shows it the most is I've played the Alola games a couple of times, and I've had this DS for five years, if not more. No, more, no, definitely more than five years. Probably six, seven years maybe at this point. You know, seven, seven, seven years at this point. And this thing is in far better shape than my old white DS was in. And I've used this DS a lot more than I've used that other DS. Now, even my um, red Mario 25th Anniversary Edition DS... That thing I used for maybe, like, three years. And the A button is already basically going flat. You know, I, I, when I got that thing during the 25th anniversary, I used that for a couple of years, then I got this. And the A button on that thing is already basically flatlining. So, it... You know, it's it's anything that conserves button presses, I'm okay with. Now, no, no wait, not, not anything. Within reason. With, within reason. But, I mean, granted, I, I have a bit of a better view of the cutscenes in Ultra and Ultra Moon and, well, the Alola games in general for that reason. Because, again, it preserves the system, you know, far better. But, again, that's that's just a me thing. Max is at least it's not the N64. I've never, I never played an N64. I never owned an N64. The only comparable console I've ever owned is the old school PlayStation 1, which is presently residing in my closet about 15 feet away. Which someday, someday, we are going to be playing games on that PlayStation. Hey, Trill. No, you're allowed to join DAs, Trill. You're allowed to join in DAs. Joysticks are so weak. Yeah, I mean, they were old school joysticks. Yeah, again, that, that's the reason why I'm entirely okay with, you know, the cutscenes. Hi, Lollipop. How are you doing, Lollipop? Again, that's, that's the reason I'm entirely okay with, like, the cutscenes. Is, again, it, it, it keeps my DS functioning longer. And, you know, that, that keeps going, which, you know, that's... That's that's certainly something. Nah, I ain't getting me here. But, you know, Pokemon Bank is still up. You know, this is kind of a, a conversation Echo and I had earlier today. It was like he was kind of a little bit freaking out that Bank was shutting down. I was like, no, Bank is still going up. Bank is still up. It's like... Th this, I mean, the reason why Bank is still up kind of goes into the whole larger scale Nintendo Pokemon division where Nintendo does not control for uh, for lack of a better term Pokemon as in Nintendo does not have on the cloud systems the Pokemon games that's the reason why if you ever get a new switch you need to manually transfer over your Pokemon save data that's why the Pokemon Bank servers are still live, despite Nintendo 3DS online systems everywhere else being taken offline. It's because uh, Pokemon basically has its own servers. It's kind of like a... It basically, it's it, 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 its own entity. Even though Nintendo does own it, to a degree... It's, it's kind of its own beast. It's very weird. Again, Lili's. Shroomish, I told you last night. I said to sit out the next one. I said if it continues to happen, it will be permanent. My DS is old, but eight... He's about eight years old. Was easy presses. 
easy to press with only bad thing was a bit greasy now. So I moved everything out of my bank prior to the online shutdown, just in case there's any issues with these rows with the online. Honestly, that's the smart thing to do, Jared. So the only thing you can shut down twice, didn't I? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I I am gonna start moving over my stuff. Which also means I really probably should get working on my uh, Pokemon game replays, you know, for, for the Let's Play series, which that's kind of one issue, is when it comes to the Let's Plays, do I basically have them be consigned to these older games, risk that? Point being, bank is still used Nintendo Network IP to log in. Wasn't sure if the dimes on the group like bank, switching over to verification. So, like, nah. I don't think, again, the thing is, they still have the servers technically. They know entirely. I have no idea what that is, uh, Gerade Master 3. Oh, uh, zero, zero, eight, sorry. I words are hard. I struggle. Verification. Hello, Raymond. How you doing? But yeah, no, it's... I, I don't think that Bank is going to go down for a while. I Realistically, I see Bank is going to still be online for two years at minimum. Until the Spinda problem is solved in Pokemon Home, I don't see Bank going down. Well... Until both the Spinda problem is solved and the remaining nine Pokemon are added into the Pokemon mainline games on the Switch. I don't think Bank is going down. Because, I mean, one of them we know, Furfrow, is going to be in Legend ZA. Because, I mean, it's Kalos. So, obviously, it's going to be in the game. But the rest of them are all Unova Pokemon. And I do not see in any way, shape, or form Genesect being in Legends ZA for three reasons. Also, thank you very much for subscribed. Reason one is it's a Unovan mythical. Legends games are basically micro stories set within that region, utilizing that region's legendaries and mythicals. So. Uh, so that, I mean, that immediately boots Genesect out of the picture, you know, just on basic principle. Reason two is Genesect only existed with modern technology. Like, the entire idea of Genesect was it was revived from a fossil by Team Plasma and cybernetically augmented with a laser cannon. I, I, I don't think... Frenchy Fry and the Funky Bunch back in Kalos 1855 had laser cannon. So that kind of already, I mean, well, that was on top of the revival resurrection technology. Like, there's, there's, I mean, that, that already kind of boots a thing out of there. And then, like, the last reason is... They're saving that for the Unova games. Like, they're, 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 they're saving a Genesect thing for the Unova games. Because it's not in Scarlet Violet. So, the only way they could do that is if they do a, another Dex expansion. Which, realistically, I think that is the most likely turn of events if they don't do a Unova remake as one of the first games on the Nintendo Switch 2.0 is they just do another round of Dex expansions for Pokemon on Home. So basically, they're bugs with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Well, aren't they um, arthropods? So yeah, I mean, that technically is a bug. I mean, same with crab. Also, friendly reminder, the Godzilla monster Desotroya literally took the return to fish meme to its logical extreme of return to crab. Yes, Destroya is literally a kaiju crab. Whether or not that gives you a hint to my next video project. Mum's the word. I'm, I'm still figuring out the kaijology series, how I'm going to basically be formatting everything. Do I go over, like, the history of the kaiju? Do I go over, like, its powers section? I'm still debating on that whole thing. Still debating on that whole thing. 
Rabbi Gravity Vetti. Yes, exactly. Funny thing, um, we had lobster for dinner two days ago, because I am a sucker for seafood. I'm gonna die of mercury poisoning eventually, we know it, but hey, I accept. I mean, hey, mercury poisoning is the price you pay for seafood. Price I gladly pay. It's not an addiction I can stop anytime I want. I just choose to enjoy seafood. Krabby is very, very yummy. Delightful. Like sushi, but for cooked salmon. Ooh, salmon delicious. Yeah, I do like salmon. I mean, again, I like seafood. It's just... It's a weakness. It is... It... it I, the thing is, I've never had sushi. I want to have sushi at some point. Uh... Yeah, I, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna do that at some point. Like, when and if I ever go to Japan... Because I, I want to go to Japan on Christmas just to see the Godzilla Christmas trees. Because those are absolutely legendary. Like, again, friendly reminder. Japan takes Christmas trees and cuts them into the shape of Godzilla for Christmas to put in malls. Like, just, just, you, you can't beat that. Just, it, you don't. You just, you just don't. That's just too good. Exactly. We can stop when we want. We don't want to exactly. Which also, again, kind of reminds me of something. They never actually show Godzilla eating anything in the new movies. Like, that's kind of one thing that I will give the 1998 American Godzilla movie a little bit of credit for. Is, you know, I mean, yes, Godzilla doesn't actually need to eat food because... Godzilla's internal power system is literally just nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Godzilla is literally a walking nuclear reactor, so he has a... He has a nuclear-based, you know, metabolism instead of, you know, how we have, like, an oxygen-based metabolism. Which is why Godzilla doesn't need to breathe. Like, th there, there is literally a part in a lot of the old Godzilla movies where Godzilla is trapped in a volcano for five years. And he, and he just wakes up like it's nothing. Godzilla doesn't need to breathe. But, he does need to get the mass from somewhere. Which is kind of one of the reasons I actually like that they showed uh, the American Godzilla in 1998 actually eating like all that fish. We're like, yeah, where is he going to get the mass? Well, 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 she, because that, that, that Godzilla was female. Where, where does Godzilla get the mass? You know, if, if after he, he fights, like, Ghidorah and gets, you know, a giant gash down his side, does he go out and, like, hunt down a, a blue whale to snack on to just, you know, re regrow that wound? Well, no, I mean, again, there's a difference between biting as an attack and, like, eating. As in, nom, 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 munch, 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 chew, chew, swallow. You know, again, like, there's... There, Godzilla uses his teeth as a weapon. But not, you know, consume for sustenance. Because, like, uh... Because, like, 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 the skull crawlers. They actually mention in Kong Skull Island, like, the skull crawlers need to basically constantly be eating because their metabolism is so ramped up into absurdity they are constantly hungry he brushes his teeth with liquid uranium yeah again Godzilla doesn't need to really eat like again Godzilla, like, Godzilla doesn't need to eat he, he eats you know nuclear energy as he absorbs it Godzilla microwaves his food passively. That is a true statement. Godzilla does microwave it passively. Which reminds me, one of my favorite memes is um, what my burrito sees in the microwave window at 2 a.m. And it's like a picture from Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah where it's the, uh, the former Japanese military dude at the top of like a skyscraper office looking out and like salutes Godzilla. And then Godzilla's atomic blasts him. Which, that requires a little bit of an explanation. So, basically, in that timeline, um, during World War II, 
there was a Japanese, like, base group of people on this one island. And then the Americans went to attack the island, you know, to get out the Japanese positions. And, you know, the Japanese people, they were being, you know, pushed back by the Americans. And then just out of nowhere, you know, pre-mutated Godzilla comes out and, like, scares off the Americans. Because, you know, it's a freaking dinosaur. Like, I mean, obviously USA number one, but what's the USA going to do against a freaking dinosaur? This is before Jurassic Park came out. We don't know what dinosaurs are. But, I mean, you know, the, 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 the big USA boats beat Godzilla, you know, the little shooting mutated Godzilla-saurus. And, you know, the guy recognizes that Godzilla, like, you know, 50 years later, that, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the dinosaur that saved us. And uh, Godzilla doesn't recognize them and just atomic blasts the building. Those movies are kind of, like, those movies are very, very, like, dark when you really think about certain parts of them. At the same time, it's, yes... We, we are going to have the giant toy grabber claw arm lift Godzilla up and fly it over the ocean. Same movie, by the way, that does that. Same movie. Again, these movies go both ends of the spectrum of emotions from, like, joyous insanity, stupidity, nonsense to actually kind of sad. George Wise didn't, didn't know dinosaurs existed. And this goes the other way as well. Honestly, I feel like even dinosaurs would respect George Washington. When Zola puts his food in the microwave, he, he nukes his food literally. <laughs> Good one. Ah, I love those movies. I love those movies. They're so silly. Ah. I was going to say something else. Um... Hello there, Shadow. How do you do? Yeah, I I look forward to the next month. Like, I there's there's a there's a, again a few Godzilla related videos in the works. One of them is talking about like the ideal future for the MonsterVerse cuz the thing about a lot of those movies is they do use a lot of CGI and that CGI does take a lot to actually make. So they they kind of can't print these movies on a yearly basis like they could when there was, you know, Guys in, in big rubber suits. Um, I have actually no idea. Hey, Viking, how you doing? Um, I did not see the eclipse. It was overcast here. Um, I have not been keeping track of encounters for Minior. But I do know that we have done about eight boxes. So, eight boxes of 30 eggs. That's about 200, uh, 224, correction. About 224 encounters. But it's probably more than that. I had like 90% of it, but I looked at the map and seeing like 50% of it. And I do like Godzilla. I loved it. The new movie, Godzilla movie was great. Like, the new Godzilla movie is is what pure joy is made out of. That is, that is the best summation for that movie. It is what pure joy is. It is fun. It is nonsense. It is absolutely glorious monster effects. And again, the the main characters are the monsters. Like, that's the thing. Is you don't go to these movies to watch human characters. You know, Godzilla Minus One did show that, yes, you can have good human characters in a Godzilla movie, in, or in a kaiju movie in general. But it's not mandatory. Like, it, all you need for a good kaiju movie is good monster fights. And I and I, I will say... I, I, I will dare to say this. I think Godzilla Kong The New Empire has succeeded in one-upping Toho's Godzilla movies for one reason. They upped the destruction ante. Because, like, yeah, Godzilla and, you know, giant monsters, you know, tearing up giant modern cities in Japan or to uh, Rio or any other giant city... You know, we we you know we, we come to expect that from monster movies. You know, we, we expect to see giant modern skyscrapers get turned into the equivalent of WWE fold-up chairs when it comes to these movies. We're, we're used to that. 
we are not used to seeing, like, historic megalithic structures getting absolutely throttled in these monster fights. Like, there, there is something just absolutely special about seeing Godzilla body-checking a kaiju through the Great Pyramids of Giza. Like, th that goes to a whole other level. And I, f I, I like that. Like, again, I love those old movies. But it's kind of something special to see that happen. Oh, thank you very much, Forever Hit. Uh, we hit 470. Thank you. Hello there, random guy. Welcome in. Like the pyramid rocket? Yes, there, there's a fight in Giza. Yes, there, there is a fight in Giza. Again, th that's kind of the funny thing. These, these movies hop all around the world. That's kind of one of the best things about the MonsterVerse. Is it's not just one city. You know, it's, it's not just, okay, here, we're fighting in Tokyo, we're fighting in Kyoto, we're fighting in Osaka, we're fighting in, you know, list of, of cities in Japan. You know, you're, you're, and I mean, obviously, Japanese architecture is amazing, I love seeing it. But, you know, it, it's something cool when you get to see, you know, all these different architectural stylings, getting absolutely crushed under folks is awesome. It's just a little bit of set dressing, love it. Uh, yes, this is Ultra Moon. Uh, did you ever see the Korean Godzilla movie? Um, I have heard of that. I have, I have heard of that one. Yes. Apparently that's, like, what Agron is based, apparently, like, the thing in that movie, or, like, the thing that that movie is based on, is what Agron's based on. Uh, Bulga Sorry, I think is what it's called. Yes, the pyramids are in one movie fight, it's great. Again, these movies go all over the world, like, you go from Rome to, like, the Caribbean somewhere, to Rio, to Egypt, to, like, the the Arctic. It's just, it's everywhere. This movie hops across the planet like it's... And then you got the Inner Earth, which is awesome. Again, the Inner Earth is just awesome for us, epic physics. Again, this movie is what pure joy is made out of. Uh, did you ever see the Korean Devil? Yeah, I've seen that one. I have, I've not seen that yet. Again, when we eventually possibly get back to movie reviews on the channel, we may be watching that at some point. You know, this movie's freaking great. Like, it, it, it's just, it just hits different, is, is the only phrase I can really use. Like, again, it is, it is pure joy. Uh, I, I just hope what they do is they start making movies for the other monsters. Like, I, I would like to see a Rodan movie. I, I would like to see a, a, a Mothra movie. I would like, I mean, well, before King of the Monsters, because Mothra gets vaporized in King of the Monsters, as is literally the whole point of Mothra. Is there another really movie good? Yes! Oh, well, okay. I like the 2014 American Godzilla. I, 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 I like the 2014 Godzilla, X, Godzilla movie. I like it. Because you don't get to see Godzilla a whole lot. So it makes Godzilla have more presence when you see him fighting. You know, if you had, you know... I think Godzilla's, I think there's like, what, like 12 minutes of Godzilla on screen in that entire movie? But imagine, say, Godzilla was in the movie for like 45 minutes. You know, you had 45 minutes of Godzilla demolishing cities, fighting the Mutos... You would be absolutely exhausted from the monster battling by the end of that movie. Hello, Blarp. So, not having the monster fights, you know, throughout the entire movie, it gives more impact for when the monster fights actually take place. And I like that. You put these dubbed in English near lines. It depends on the movie. Um... It, it does depend. When it comes to specifically the original... Uh, when it comes to specifically the original Godzilla... That I say... 
Japanese with English subtitles. That is that is that is the only way to watch the original Gojira. Um, the other movies, I think you can really go either way. But the original, I think, specifically does need to be watched in Japanese with English subtitles. And I'm someone who watches anime subbed. No, not subbed. I'm someone who watches anime dubbed. Like, that, that, that is the one time I stress subbed is, is the only way to go. At least for a first time viewing. After that, you know, if you, if... After that, then yes. Um, also, minus one. Uh, Godzilla minus one, I do recommend seeing that in Japanese with English subtitles. But, again, for similar reasons why the first movie seeing with English subtitles is kind of the main thing. Uh, Gojira does have a Japanese accent, never mind. Yeah, so, um, are you talking about in, in uh, the Godzilla 2014 movie? Yeah, so, here's the funny thing about that, Mr. Mash. That scene in the script, Ken Watanabe's character was originally supposed to say Godzilla. However, Ken Watanabe, being the absolute based chad of a human being he is, specifically insisted that they use the Japanese pronunciation Gojira, because, one, he is Japanese, but also the character he is playing, Dr. Ishiro Seozawa, is also Japanese. So, that made it into the movie, and I'm just like, yes. Yes. Like, that is how you show respect to the character. Like, when the people making these movies show that level of respect to the characters, it translates on screen. Which is, again, one of the reasons why I will forever say Dr. Sarazawa is the best character in the MonsterVerse, and they're never going to top him. I just let me close the stream for like a minute to buy my thing. Um, can you give me a list of monster movies I should watch? Um, I can give you a list of monster movies. I can't give you a list of where they're available. Because a lot of the time, I have them on DVD. A lot of them I have on DVD. Um, monster movies to watch, though? Original Godzilla, minus one. Uh, the entire MonsterVerse. So, Godzilla 2014, Kong Skull Island, Godzilla King of the Monsters, Godzilla vs. Kong, and Godzilla Kong the New Empire. Recommend all those. Uh, for other ones... Recommend the original Godzilla, minus one, all oh, fantastic. Uh, really, I recommend the entire Heisei Godzilla series. So, Return of Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Biollante, Godzilla vs. Moth of the Battle for Earth, Godzilla vs. Destroya, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. This got, this one, I think there's one more I'm leaving out on that one, and then Godzilla vs. Destroya. Recommend seeing that one, that was one of the best ones. Uh... I, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, I mean, it, it's a bit cheesy, a bit campy, but I do recommend uh, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, because that is the first movie that has Ghidorah in it, that literally introduces Godzilla's arch nemeses, so it's kind of a, you know, a bit, a bit, a bit of a thing. Uh... Godzilla Final Wars, I always recommend Godzilla Final Wars, because that movie is just pure silly fun, like, it, Godzilla Final Wars is literally a movie where the entire point, where the whole plot is aliens invade, control all of the monsters on Earth other than Godzilla and Mothra, and Godzilla has to go around all across the world kicking each and every monster's ass on his own, and he mops the floor with all of them. It is absolutely like it. It is. It is basically the the movie equivalent of a boss rush, and it is amazing. Like, like 
I have one Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, maybe one other. I don't. I don't think they're on there. Yeah, I, I remember they're, they're they're owned by Toho, and I don't think they're on the streaming services. Oh, but yeah, those movies are great. It's like okay, Godzilla: Final Wars is just it's silly, it's stupid, and it's fun. I uh, but other than that, like. I mean, I mean, I generally recommend a lot of them. Like a lot of the, a lot of the Showa ones are a bit silly. Uh, some of the Millennium ones are good, but they're a bit of an acquired taste. Like I like Godzilla 2000. I know most people don't. I, I like it, but again, that's just me. Uh, yeah. Got about I, I did not forget about me. I did not forget about Manila. I just don't like Manila. I didn't forget it was deliberate, Omar. Uh, I could probably DM you the list, yeah. The list is based fairly extensive. But yeah, I love it. I, I like that movie. Yeah, I got... Welcome. Yeah. Again, Godzilla is one of the three fictional things to actually get me to cry. Uh, Godzilla vs. Destroya is... So, this... Th Meta, do you think Jaws vs. Godzilla would do well? Um, no. Godzilla would absolutely just obliterate Jaws. Jaws is, is, a, is a regular shark. Uh, Godzilla would just, like, swim past Jaws... And, uh, and, and, and then, it, it, Jaws would just die. I am a legendary announced son of Godzilla is in the MonsterVerse. I wouldn't be like, I mean, so long as they, like, if they make son of Godzilla look like, um, uh, baby Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, where... It looks like a small Godzilla. I would be okay with that. Because I, I, I still hold up Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2's version of Baby Godzilla as probably the best iteration of Baby Godzilla or like a, a juvenile form of Godzilla we've ever had. Because like, one, it actually looks like a dinosaur. It's not overly cute. Like, I mean, I like Baby Godzilla in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla because he's adorable. But... I prefer the look of uh, Baby Godzilla in Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla 2. SpongeBob Season 3 shows up. I'm searching for Godzilla. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, the nuclear tests did take place at Bikini Atoll. There is... There is that internet theory that uh, all the fish in Bikini Bottom... Our mutant, our mutants from the nuclear tests at Bikini Atoll. So that doesn't make that doesn't surprise me. I think Jaws. We don't think don't. I don't Jaws. We get extra with radiation. Just checked a lot of Prime Video. Just checked. Oh really? Didn't really a lot of them on Prime Video. Somebody asked me what the worst version of Zola was. Like. Again, to to be fair, even Godzilla couldn't break free. Of Space Godzilla's Gravity Tornado. So, e e even Godzilla was unable to resist the power of the Gravity Tornado. What the heck was Junior going to do? There there was literally nothing Junior could do against that. Yes, I've, I've seen all of the Godzilla movies. Godzilla vs. Megalon is chef's kiss. Like That is the movie with the gravity-defying drop kick. Like, that scene is just... Again, I have one hope for the MonsterVerse, and I'll probably never do it. I want to see the gravity-defying dropkick in a movie. We'll probably never get it, but hey, it'll be glorious if they do. Also, thank you very much, whoever subscribed. Hello there, Pastel Nightmare. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Pastel Nightmare. That sounds like every Kirby game ever, where everything is brightly colored, and yet it is nightmare fuel. Yeah, I've, I've seen Godzilla vs. Megalon. That movie is... Oh, <sighs> uh, that, that was from the blessed era of the Showa films. 
where logic does not make sense, but where logic doesn't matter, we're here to be silly and fun. And 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 we're here like we we've got aliens that are giant cockroaches that have a giant robot Godzilla made of and I am not joking, the metal is called space titanium. It's like regular titanium, except it is from space. I'm not joking. Again, th those movies were something special. <laughs> oh, yes, those movies are something. God, I love them. <sighs> but yeah, um... Kind of one of the things that I, I guess like, highlights the most how well-received some of the Godzilla movies actually are. Like, uh, Godzilla vs. Destroya is probably one of the only times you will ever see me agreeing with the critics' score of a movie. Because that movie is rated by the critics to be a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Yes. If you go to Rotten Tomatoes right now, there is a Godzilla movie that has a 100% certified fresh rating. And the thing is, the audience score is a 93. That is one movie, critics done good. That That's one movie where the critics, I agree. Uh, one thing, if you, if you guys are new here, you'll find I generally don't agree with movie critics on the rating of movies. Because I go to movies to have fun and watch nonsense and shenanigans. Maybe a good story if there is one, but I'm there to see the giant CGI special effects fight scenes. Yes, I love the Kirby games. I adore Kirby. What kinds of movies would you say is a bit of a hard time watching? Okay. When, when you say hard time watching, do you mean hard time watching because the movie is constantly punching me in the feels in a way that makes me sad? Or hard to watch as in the movie is just kind of very cringy? Because I have, se I, I have several answers for one and I have a single answer for another. 100% of the audience must have been like the dislike button must have said I dis up. Yes, exactly. Exactly, Jared. That or they were sad about the ending. Which, if that's the case, fair play. The ending is sad. Uh, Godzilla vs. Destroya. Even to this day, I have a hard time watching the ending of Godzilla vs. Destroya because the ending of that movie is literally Godzilla dies. And... He doesn't come out of nowhere. The movie from the very beginning sets up Godzilla is not going to survive this movie. Because the basic premise of the movie is that Godzilla's nuclear reactor, which is his heart, is starting to melt down. And... Basically, if Godzilla goes full nuclear meltdown, the whole world goes kaboom. So, y you know from the start, Godzilla's not getting out of this alive. And it is, the ending scene is, is it's prolonged. You know, it's, it's, it's not a, a quick ending scene. Hello there, Jackson. How you doing? Like... They literally rewrote the ending to the movie because the original way the movie was supposed to end was Godzilla is holding on to the antagonist kaiju of the movie as he is melting down. And it is the sheer intensity of the, the, the meltdown that vaporizes the other kaiju. And, you know, so it's basically... You know, I, I'm, I'm taking you with me. Because, in context, 
said Kaiju, killed Junior, who is Godzilla's adoptive son. And uh, let's just say if you do that, you're, you're, you're not getting out well. But they rewrote the ending because they thought, you know, if, if, if they have the final thing be, yo, Godzilla goes down fighting another monster, it, it takes away the focus of, you know, this, this, this is meant to be sad. This, this, this is not meant to be an action. The hero goes out in a glorious last stand. This, this, this is sad. This, 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 is, this is not meant to be a joy moment. And it's, it's very well done. You know, it, it, is, it is very rare when a musical composer does the theme music for a single character across 41 years that they also get to play the song that is the death song of a character. But when they do that, you are not going to be walking away without the feels. You know, it is it is a very well done scene, very well done movie. And it is it is a very hard movie for me to watch even to this day. O almost two decades after having seen it for the first time and knowing the ending, I still have a hard time watching that scene. You know, there's the, even when I was working on the Massive Godzilla retrospective and I actually had to watch that scene a couple of times for editing purposes, I, I, I still almost cried. And I, I, I literally have no shame about saying, yes, I almost cried watching Godzilla die. Because Godzilla is literally my role model throughout my life. You know, I know a lot of people look up like Superman or Batman or Goku. No, 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 I, I, look, up, I look up to Godzilla. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Ah. <sighs> Well, I mean, again, I, 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 I finally found the one thing that gets me to break the monotoneness. Just talking about Godzilla. <laughs> I also just realized I, I didn't even take my allergy medicine today. Because, <laughs> like, they were really bugging me earlier today. And I was like, wait, I didn't even take it today. I just realized that. Cause I, I, don't, I don't take Benadryl, and Benadryl kind of has a little side effect where it kind of, like, makes you tired. Generally, you need to sleep. Go watch Blorb. Go, not go watch. Go sleep, Blorb. Sleep is very important. Sleep is incredibly important. Mini Minior. I think at this point, we've probably passed 270 mini or eggs. Yeah, 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 we passed 270 at this point because we, we finished another box. Yeah, it was great. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Uh, I think that's five eggs. I, I hope that it's in the next five eggs. I hope it's in the next five eggs. I, I, would, I would freaking love a shiny mini or. Like, once I get this mini or shiny... I, all I need to do is finish getting the ribbons on a couple of my Pokemon, and then I can basically just start moving everything up into Pokemon Home. Because the entire reason I'm doing this actually this mini or shiny hunt is a pure vanity project, and I will not deny that. It is purely so I can have a shiny mini or with the Alola Champion ribbon, because I'm a sucker for ribbons. Okay, let's see. Um, was I gonna go look up? Oh yes, I was gonna go look up. Was that your guys' PS4 game of plan stream? I appreciate the the thought, but I do not I I do not have like a PO box or anything like that because that's kind of private information. I appreciate the thought, but I I would probably rather get that game myself. Yeah, I've heard good things about that movie, though. I've heard that good thing. Ah, uh, yes. 
Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. I love how people are so confused over that, even though they explain it in the movie. Proves what? Oh yeah, again, um, I, I think that the MonsterVerse is definitely going to be on track for like the next, you know, couple of years with good movies and stuff, because uh, Toho is already greenlit Legendary to have literally the entire library of monsters available. Uh, for, for, for context for people, the company that basically owns Godzilla is notoriously tight-fisted about their, uh, their, their copyrights of everything. Uh, your Pokemon Bank is uh, how you send it into the, into the things. It's, it's the Pokemon Bank system. Uh, for context, the people who don't uh, know Toho is incredibly tight-fisted about the, 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 the intellectual properties of the monsters. Even more tight-fisted than uh, Pokemon Company is about their stuff. Which is kind of impressive, considering Pokemon Company and Nintendo are like... Crush grip on their, their, their IPs. Like, they did not like that people were actually doing Let's Plays and videos of their games. Despite, uh, until they realized, wait, people doing Let's Plays of our games gets, like, information and goodwill about these games out to people. It is helping to boost the sales of these games. So they, they, they backed off. And, you know, Toho is incredibly tight-fisted. However... Toho has Toho has already greenlit the MonsterVerse, where here's the keys to the safe. The safe has the rights to every monster we have ever made and owned the rights to. Go nuts. Which is amazing. Because, again, yeah, that, that shows the level of trust. Which is amazing. And it's just like, the, 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 these guys know what they're doing. These, these, these guys have a plan. And, uh, that's, that gives me a lot of hope. That gives me much hope. I mean, I, I love the monsters they've introduced in the MonsterVerse. I like the new ones. Like, the Muto, I think that's pretty cool. Scylla, Tiamat, I think they're all pretty cool. Scar King, unnamed other kaiju. Well, unnamed two other kaiju. I think they're all pretty cool. But I would like to see some more classic ones. I, I I would love to see them, you know, reinvent some of the classic ones. You know, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see a new version of Batra. I'd like, like to see a new version of Batra. Which is a bit niche. Not, I know not everyone loves Batra, but, you know, I see it. I, I, I just think... I, I, I just think... They're, they're, they're waiting to bring in the aliens. Like, again, the fact that they are referencing Ghidorah uh, kind of frequently, and they've already said in-universe, yes, Ghidorah's an alien, and no one in-universe is talking aliens exist in the MonsterVerse makes me think they're not going to have more monsters from the, the inner Earth. The rabid monsters from out of space coming. You have to buy Pokemon Bank with a description. Um, if you needed to have downloaded Pokemon Bank on your 3DS before the eShop closed down over a year ago. That is the only way to have gotten Pokemon Bank. Hello there, uh, Sizzle21. Welcome in. If you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. And leave a like on the stream. Uh, yeah, Godzilla. I am, uh, I'm, I'm a very, very big fan of Godzilla. Which, uh, you can't really tell, aside from the Godzilla Final Wars figure in the background. Ah, uh, yes, fellow Godzilla fan. Nice, like, there, you can sort of see the thing right above me. That's a, it's a glass painted box with, like, a bunch of layered pieces of glass that are all painted with a bunch of different Godzilla monsters. I've got like seven Godzilla figures on the um, the armoire, original Godzilla movie poster on the wall, like three Godzilla posters yet to be hung up. It's great, I love them. You belong here. Space Godzilla. 
Possibly Space Godzilla. The funny thing is I actually have a Space Godzilla figure that are just kind of constantly glaring down on me. This is my first Godzilla figure I ever got. Um, Space Godzilla, I'm not sure. I'm thinking more like possibly Gigan or Megalon. Yeah, I saw Godzilla, uh, I saw Godzilla Kong the New Empire. I saw that the day it was released. Like, I, I had those tickets purchased well in advance because I love these movies and I was like, I, I am not missing this movie. Like, to, 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 to show the degree of enthusiasm I have... Yes, my shirt is the Solar Eclipse shirt. Uh, to, 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 that's the reason we're hunting Minior today. To, sh the, to put into perspective how much I love these Godzilla movies, 10 years ago, when Godzilla 2024, uh, 2014 came out, I bought a shirt for the movie that I wanted to have delivered before the movie, before I would go see the movie, so I could go see the movie wearing that shirt. Uh, a few years later, when I went to college, I gained a lot of weight, I came home, tried the shirt on, and it didn't fit. Now, when I say it didn't fit, I mean, if I wore that shirt, it was so tight, it would have basically started popping seams. So, I was like, okay, I, I need to put this shirt away in storage, and I need to start losing weight. So... Smash cut via Rocky style training montage to me losing 50 pounds so I can wear that shirt again. <laughs> and it worked. I can, I can still wear that shirt today. I wore that shirt when I saw Godzilla, uh, Godzilla calling the new empire. Like it worked. Yeah. Like, um, it, a good comparison for like just the, the physical difference in how I look is a few about a, about a week ago. I made an entire like uh, retrospect. I think I've ever subscribed. Ever subscribed. I made a massive personal Godzilla retrospective, and in that there is footage of me from right after I graduated college, side by side with me when I recorded that, and. There is a very, very significant difference. Uh, this is Pokemon Ultra Moon. You know, it's like, it's, it's... I, I, I legitimately do not look the same as I did before I lost those 50 pounds. You wear the shirt next stream during the termination, wear the shirt. The thing is, I don't wear that shirt often for a few reasons. One, the shirt's 10 years old. And the more you wear a shirt, the more and it is the more it's washed, the more it starts to basically wear out. And the more it, it wears out, the more damage it accumulates. Which, you know, I I like reserving that shirt for very special occasions. You know, things like seeing a new Godzilla movie in theaters, or if I'm recording a special video wearing that shirt. It's not really an everyday wearing shirt. Man, a focus commitment is sheer. I mean, the thing is, you say focus. Um, I have ADD, so I, I have very, very minimal focus. So I think this, uh, shout out because I know super small kind of I'm always happy to give a shout out, but generally I do shout outs for creators that I know but welcome in. Uh, generally not the best way is to, you know, ask for a shout-out. Generally the best way is to get to know as a creator first, but, alright. When I was younger, I saw uh, first Godzilla movie, I was having bad nightmares, so after I saw Godzilla, I didn't have another nightmare in years. When I started Godzilla, I question. Exactly. Again, I, 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 I looked up to Godzilla when I was younger. Godzilla was my hero. Ah. Uh, again, I, I, I was, it's all good. It's all good. I do like to shout out a lot of the small creators because when I actually had to go back to college, it actually was the larger creators I knew that actually did give a shout out that actually helped the channel keep going. So I, I do like to give a shout out. What was your favorite part of the movie? Can, can I just say everything? <laughs> can, I, can I just say the whole movie? <laughs> um, but in all, in all seriousness, I I think 
my favorite scene in the whole movie actually was the uh, the fight scene in Giza. Like, I think that might have been my favorite scene. Because they gave Godzilla his judo black belt again. Godzilla got his black belt in judo in another timeline. Yeah, we're doing it for Johnny Minior. Uh, again, one of my favorite just pieces of Godzilla trivia to mention. Godzilla, in the original movies, was a black belt in judo. Because the guy who did the suit acting... I was a, was a judo practitioner, and he incorporated that into his fighting style, which is just freaking great. That Godzilla is a black belt in judo. <laughs> freaking love these movies. But, you know, it is, it is kind of funny that, you know, for me, I Godzilla does basically mean hope and inspiration when you go back to, you know, what originally prompted Godzilla's creation is, like, literally the exact opposite. Black Belt God Zudo. <laughs> yes! Yes. Yeah, like, it's, it's kind of, like... Like, again, it, it's ironic, but it's like, that's how a well-written character could be. Like, again, do you think that... Where's all those spoilers, please? Uh, possibly. Possibly. That's one thing I do actually really like about uh, Kong, uh, Godzilla Kong New Empire is that, like, Scar King is to a degree a dark mirror of Kong, whereas, you know, Kong is, is, is big, burly brute force. He's a bit like a boxer. You know, he's, he's basically to do one big heavy hit. And then you've got, you know, Scar King, where he's tall, he's lanky, but he's very agile. You know, man is literally doing tactical combat cartwheels. You know, when he doesn't even need to. Which I freaking love. Where it's like, yes, he he's... He, you, you, you fight, you know, this big burly giant thing that fights, you know, with brute force, with agility. I love that. Scar King was the worst film, which was... Which, what are you talking about? Yes. And, like, that's what I like. That is what I really like, is that even... You know, is, is that... Like, the, the monsters are actually, like, surprisingly well-written. That... It, it, they they are actually fairly well written with well done characterization. Like it's it's not spoon fed character traits where it's like the characters are dictating you know to the audience that this is what the monsters are feeling. Like you can actually see what the monsters are feeling, what they're doing, and you know it's it's show don't tell, which is a rule that Hollywood kind of forgot about. Like the monster movies are actually showing it pretty good. It's like yeah, they actually have the monsters have characterization, which I freaking love. Like one one of my favorite things is like oh nice Chinese spear Tom is delightful like one of my favorite things is like back in Godzilla King of the Monsters it is it is the the, the degree of like absolute glee and sadism on display with Ghidorah where Ghidorah knows entirely using the gravity beams on the little generic human peoples is completely excessive. It just doesn't care because it finds it amusing. And it's like, that's terrifying. Th that's more terrifying than if Ghidorah just walks over you, doesn't even know you're there. It knows you're there. It wants you to be afraid. And it wants to destroy you for its own amusement. Uh, we do a lot of videos here. We're actually working on actually a couple of video series involving Godzilla. But we do everything from Let's Plays to video guides to discussion videos. Uh, I recommend checking out the last uh, Godzilla video we made, which is just the, the giant Godzilla retrospective. It... Good thing. You make a custom Godzilla rap. Um, I do not rap. However, it's funny you mention that. 
because I actually did write a song about Godzilla when I was in high school. Oh. I pray that thing never sees the light of day ever again. But I wrote that back when I had my first YouTube channel. Which was... Which actually kind of reviving that channel now. The uh, the Critic Daikaiju well, was originally the Kaiju Critic, but I, re I decided to recall it, the, the Critic Daikaiju as time went on. And I, I wrote, wrote a song for it about Godzilla. And it was horribly cringy. I wrote that thing like a decade ago. If I can dig it out, I'll probably rewrite it. But, yeah, no, I actually have written a, a, a song for Godzilla. Love it. I, I am, I am, I am, I am, I would, I would not sing it. <laughs> no. You would not want to hear me sing, because my singing voice sucks. Though, um, I did promise Miju that I would sing Peaches from the Super Mario Bros. movie. I, I did, I did make a promise I would sing that. Also, so thank you, much. Yeah, I got to start back with Dora Grew's head back. Also, love that movie. So it was. I love King of the Monsters. Like, I know people don't like King of the Monsters. I love it because it's literally just but monster fights. We go to these movies to see monster fights. We don't care about the story. We go to see excuses for a giant atomic fire-breathing dinosaur suplexing a three-headed space dragon through a skyscraper. That's why we come to these movies. We don't come for story. It's nice to have, but it's not mandatory. Yeah, no, Ghidorah regrowing his head right there was actually, like, super terrifying. But I like that scene. They actually did explain to a degree, I think it was in the novelization, about why it was Ghidorah was able to regrow his head so quickly. It is specifically because, one, Ghidorah's brain is basically passively throughout its entire body, like an octopus. But also that the volcano where Radon, or Rodan, I, I sort of flip up between King Rodan and Radon, because they're the same names. Um, the volcano was you know, a, 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 it was radioactive, you know, it was, obviously, Rodan was sleeping there, it was irradiated, and there's a lot of radiation being given off by it. It was because Ghidorah was able to absorb the radiation from it, it was able to accelerate its healing, which actually foreshadows the usage of the nuke by Dr. Sarazawa to revive Godzilla. Not expecting his head to get ripped off. Oh, yeah, the, 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 oh, yeah no, like, the, the head getting ripped off was just freaking great. It was like, like, that's something that I mentioned in a couple of previous streams, something that I'm actually mentioning in a couple of the future videos I'm doing involving Godzilla stuff, is the fights in the MonsterVerse are freaking brutal. Like, that's one big advantage the MonsterVerse has with the very heavy CGI usage you didn't have back with the suit acting. Is that when they were suits... You really couldn't rough them up, because, you know, it's their suits. They're very expensive, and, you know, for, at, by the time, you know, Godzilla was a well-established franchise, they wouldn't want to damage the suits for a movie, because, you know, what if you have to go reshoot? They, they didn't want to damage them. So, you couldn't really do a whole lot of, you know, pretty vicious combat with, with the kaiju. And every time you would actually have, like, an injury on a kaiju you would need to make a new suit. So, like, say in Godzilla versus Space Godzilla, when, you know, they, they blow off Space Godzilla's energy crystals on his shoulders, when they blew off, you know, say, the right shoulder, but the left crystal was still there, they needed to make a new suit that specifically was the Space Godzilla suit, just with the right shoulder missing. And then... When they destroyed the left crystal, they need to make an, a third suit that was both crystals missing. Um, I feel like the thermo... Gee, absolutely destroyed that. Yeah. Uh, thermonuclear Godzilla, uh, the term for that is burning Godzilla, is actually so powerful, he is unstable. That... Godzilla would actually have detonated after the fight because he was not able to control that much nuclear power 
You know, he, he basically over he absorbed too much that he was he was in, he was unstable. He was going into critical mass, which was a good callback to Godzilla versus Destroya. It was actually only because just uh, Ghidorah vaporized Mothra, and Mothra basically her power was absorbed by Godzilla, that it one stabilized Godzilla's uh, runaway nuclear reaction, allowing him to fully harness that power but also to be stable enough to not go into nuclear meltdown and process all that radiation effectively. Which, to, 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 to use the phrase from Star Wars, strike me down and I shall become more powerful than you could ever possibly imagine, not quite apt, but close enough. Use normal thermos, you not know, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Like, that's one of the reasons I freaking love those movies. It's like, there's a surprising amount of story told just without it being visually told. Again, it respects the rule of show, don't tell. Which, again, another little detail on that. If you look at the eye spots on Mothra's wings in um, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, the eye spots are Godzilla's eyes. You know, that, uh, again, uh, moths and butterflies in real life, they have, you know, spots on their wings that look like owl's eyes as you know, a way to deter birds from eating them, to scare, to basically scare them off. But Mothra's, like, wing spots are, they're Godzilla's eyes. It's not to scare off predators. It was done entirely to show, subtly, there is a connection between this kaiju and this kaiju, as foreshadowing, which is just great storytelling. That is how you do visual storytelling. And I love it. And yeah, the nuclear pulse with the wings. Again, very deliberate and I love it. It's like, again, that's, that's visual storytelling. I love it. It's... Ah. Uh, again, it's weird seeing the giant dinosaur monster punch movie is the one that actually respects the one principal rule of, fil rule of filmmaking of show, don't tell. I love it. It's like... It's not quite a masterclass of subtlety, as there's a lot of non-subtle things about Godzilla King of the Monsters. But, like, it's, it respects that one rule more than anything. We've not gotten any shines today. Do you think we'll play through? Well, if we get Shining Groudon in the next three encounters in our Dynamax Adventures, we actually will do a Deerling only playthrough. Yeah, I love that movie. Like, those movies are great. And I, I, I look forward... I, I hope so, too. Yeah, I, I look forward to seeing them. And again, I'm looking forward to making those Godzilla videos. Like, the Godzilla retrospective, that did about, I think, what, like 2,000 views? When when I, when I made that, I didn't even expect that thing to break 20 views. That was just something I wanted to do just as, like, a personal thing. And that had quickly evolved in the span of two days to being my best performing video of all time. Um, do you have any new Pokemon games? Um, I've got Scarlet, Violet, Sword, Shield, Legends Arceus. I'm going to be getting Legends ZA when it releases. Yeah, like, that, I, I woke up, um, on, I think it was, like, Saturday. And I, and I checked just, you know, my, my channel thing. And I just saw, like, this, this, this massive, just, plateau of views. Where it was, like, the video spiked up. And it was maintaining a massive spike of viewing. And I was like, oh, maybe a, a short went well. Maybe a stream, you know, popped off and, you know, people clicked on it. I clicked on the thing, you know, see analytics. And I saw, oh, the Godzilla one's doing well. So I, I clicked on that. And I saw average watch time of a 36-minute video. Average watch time over 15 minutes. So people were people were watching that video very intensely, not clicking off, which was like people like this. People people like giant monster fights. But yeah, no, it was it was it was seeing that and then seeing like that that was my best performing video for a, it, like that is my best performing. Video. I thought that the fossil fighters video was was going to be the best performing one for a while, and, and that thing just blew it out of the water. It was like that was amazing. That Scarlet and Arceus don't have much in them. Are you trying to go for the uh, the Shiny Charm? If you need help getting the Shiny Charm, I'm happy to help. Hmm. 
I mean, it was that that video did incredibly well, which is why we're actually doing a, a new like sub series about you know more Godzilla stuff. About the Godzilla vs King Kong, the movie was most about King Kong, not about you. I'm kind of okay with that. That it was about uh, Kong more than Godzilla, for one reason. Godzilla is kind of overpowered. Kong is a much more compelling character insofar as he is human to the point of he can't win fights with brute force. You know, even though he is physically very strong, he is not as strong as a lot of the other monsters. That's why the Kongs need, you know, the battle axe made of the Godzilla spike. That's why he has to be clever when he fights other monsters. Whereas Godzilla is an unstoppable force. You know, God Godzilla is intrinsically the most powerful single organism on the planet. Which is why he is the Alpha Titan. That he he is intrinsically the most powerful. Now there are some series like One Punch Man where like the the whole premise is following an absurdly overpowered character who just effortlessly destroys everything. But that works for a series like One Punch Man because that is it, it, it's, it's satire. Whereas this is meant to be you know a, a movie that is is telling a story. But I like Shiny, so the charm would be nice, but we have to get. Yeah, I'm ha I'm happy to help with um I'm happy to help with the other Shiny Charm. Where like, the, really the conflict of the movie is specifically like the rivalry between the the Godzilla super species and the Kong super species. And that in the end, the two of them do have a, a mutual respect for one another. Where even though Godzilla wins, cause in the end, Godzilla beat Kong two out of their three rounds of fighting. <laughs> Godzilla's the one that's like, let bygones be bygones. Um, I do know what Monster Hunter is. I have never played a game, but I have heard of it. Uh, one more question. What do you think would win in a fight? One of those men, Goku, or Godzilla? Who do you think would win? I, th I mean, I think that Godzilla would win against One Punch Man because the radiation would just completely scramble Saitama's DNA. Uh, but I don't know One Punch Man or Dragon Ball enough to really make any determinations. Like, I, I, I don't know the series well enough. Like, I, I don't know how Saiyan physiology reacts with, uh, you know, nuclear radiation... You know, I, I don't know if uh, Goku would basically be able to use Ki Blasts to destroy Godzilla's body fast that he could regenerate. You know, Saitama, I mean, Saitama would probably get cooked by radiation. Though I do believe the Spirit Bomb is that one thing I do know about Dragon Ball is, like, the Spirit Bomb can't hurt anyone that, like, you know, does not have evil in their heart. And Godzilla does not have good nor evil, you know, in his heart. Godzilla is neutral. Godzilla's interest is he is keeping the planet safe. Humanity doesn't really factor into that equation. It is basically that, that thing of get off my lawn. This is my home. Because, I mean, the Earth is literally Godzilla's territory. Godzilla doesn't have an issue with you unless you make it a problem. So, like, I, I don't think some of those guys would actually be able like, to hurt Godzilla. Because, again, he's not good nor evil. Goku would give him a man prison. Yeah, we have a little bunch of quotes. Again, I, I don't know nearly enough about Dragon Ball or One Punch Man to make any, like, definitive statements. But I, again, it could just be Yobi being, you know, biased toward Godzilla, but I generally lean towards Godzilla on most things. Saitama can bench press black holes. 
That's terrifying. That is that is that is a terrifying problem. I think that's what it means like Saitama is like it's it's satire. It's it's very very deliberately over the top, and that's why I think like making a move that would like entirely follow Godzilla. Like if, if they made Godzilla vs Kong from Godzilla's perspective, the movie would basically be Godzilla clowning on Kong. Uh, what is your team for Shiny Pearl? I mean, it's like, again, I, I like this movie. Yeah, Godzilla's just a more, much more compelling character. Um, But yeah, I mean, the Shining Pearl, uh, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl Elite 4, it actually is the hardest Elite 4 of the entire franchise because they actually have good effort values. Uh, first thing I would recommend is train your levels up to, like, level 62 across the board. That is my recommendation. Because the entire Elite Four in BDSP actually has full effort values. Which basically gives them, in the stats that matter, uh, about a 13 level level advantage over what they would be if they didn't have any effort values. So, I generally say go in like level like low 60s. Yeah, I'd recommend raising everything's level up to level about 62. Best place to do that is Grand Underground. We could fight like level 65s right now. But this is better than Godzilla's insane. You just to fight. Well, no, it's the reason why is Kong is something that can rival Godzilla's place as the dominant species, as like the dominant individual kaiju on the planet. It is Kong's presence is implicitly a challenge to Godzilla because if you read a lot of the backstory on Godzilla, a member of Kong's species actually drove Godzilla out of the inner earth. That Godzilla has historically had encounters with the Kong species and... One of them beat him, drove him from his own den, and he, he, he takes that a bit personally. I mean, literally, you know, someone, someone kicked you out of your house, their grandson or something like that, you know, you see, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you're not going to have the best will towards them. Knows he can win. Also, yes, he he knows he can beat Kong. Like the thing that shows Godzilla knows he can win is during the entire first fight on the ocean. What is Godzilla's first, you know, instinct to do? Overturn the boat and drown Kong. That is his first thing. Just simply drown him. And you know what? It would have worked. If it weren't for the people dropping depth charges, Godzilla would have won. How many hatches have? Um, at this point, we're probably closing in on 300 hatches. Yeah, yeah, he he's, he he does it. He lunges at him and he turns the boat over just so you get to to drown Kong. Because Kong can't swim. He's like, yeah, okay, Godzilla's smart. He he, he knows about tactically. But again, it shows more later on. Godzilla is ultimately the one. that ends the uh, the rivalry in that movie where after they beat Mechagodzilla, he just looks at Kong and is like, just walks away. Because like, he, he knows he can beat Kong. He killed Kong in Hong Kong because Kong's heart was going to stop. If it wasn't for the little floating pod thing basically defibrillating Kong, Kong would have died because his heart would have stopped. And yes, it was them teaming up to fight Mechagodzilla that basically showed, okay, maybe we can get along. But Godzilla already proved to Kong he can beat him. However, Kong earned Godzilla's respect by assisting him in defeating Mechagodzilla. So he's like, I've earned your, you've earned the respect. Uh, for, for today, I'll, I'll let you be. And I love that. Again, 
actually pretty good characterization on Godzilla. I love it. Uh, but he spared him, though. Yeah. Yeah, again, he, well, the reason why that they fought again is Kong specifically called Godzilla to challenge him there. There, there's, there's reasoning in the movie for why that happens, but Kong basically baited Godzilla to fight him. You know, that's, that's the reason why Kong basically, like, roars is to, to get Godzilla to like, basically, hey, I'm here, let's fight, bro. And I freaking love that. It's like, oh. And again, immediately after, it's like, okay, let's team up. I love it. It's like, you know, Godzilla does not, Godzilla is not an unmovable model. If Godzilla does, you know... Generally, he's very you know, he's like no, like this is this is a rival. Like, okay, we have a, we have a common enemy. Let's team up and fight this thing. I like it, I love it. This movie's great. Again, these movies are silly fun, and I love them. Like this 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 is pure joy. These movies are pure joy. He was Inferno, Lux Ray, Star After, Jarachi, Garchomp, and a Palace One. Um, I would recommend getting Ancient Power on your Pylos Swine for a Mamo Swine. That is going to be very very important. And level everything up to level 62. You know, level 62 across the board. I think you should be pretty pretty fine for that. Cynthia is going to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, if you feel the need, you can go up to level 63 across the board. But I think that is a fairly good team. You you should, I think, be able to take it on. Just make sure that Mammoth one's got, like, Ice Shard and, um, like, Ice Go Crash. You know, then you should be fine. Yeah, Sh Shining Pearl Elite Four is pretty hard. It is it is the hardest. But yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed Sizzle. I'm glad you enjoyed this. No, Pylos Wine evolves by leveling up knowing the move Ancient Power. Um, I believe the only way to get it to know Ancient Power is you need to get a heart scale. Go to Pastoria City where the move relearner is. And just have it relearn Ancient Power. After that, you can just delete Ancient Power once it evolves, and then you're fine. Um, Evan, the reason why I am doing it in Generation 7, not Generation 9, is I specifically want to get the Alola Champion Ribbon on my mini R. It was the same reason we shiny hunted for Mimikyu back in this generation, not in uh, Generation 9, is I, I really just want to get that ribbon on it. For, for no reason other than personal vanity. Yeah, always happy to help. A little under level. Yeah, I'd, I'd recommend leveling your whole team up. I recommend getting everything to level 65. Uh, level 65. I recommend getting your whole team up to level 62. No, you can transfer it. You can transfer it. I, I literally just opened Pokemon Home early, uh, Pokemon Bank earlier today and sent something over. Yeah, you can transfer it up to the modern games. They were closing down all online services other than Pokemon Bank. And very likely Bank is still going to be open for a, a minimum of another two years. Because there's still several Pokemon that are not able to be transferred into Pokemon Home. Yeah. Also, don't forget to subscribe, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't done so already. This is going to be our final batch of eggs for the night. Tomorrow, we are going to be back to our regularly scheduled shiny Latias hunting in Dynamax Adventures. We are double over odds on that thing. I am hoping we get it tomorrow. But you never know. What time do you say is? Uh, Pastoria City is the movie learner. However, you need a heart scale for that. Um, if you don't have any heart skills, I recommend just going into the Grand Underground and just digging for a while. I mean, I, I freaking love the Grand Underground digging. It's absolutely fun. 
I, I, I literally have done digging in the grand underground for hours. Just as personal music, it's freaking fun. Uh, but, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna need to go gather some more eggs. I'm gonna gather some more eggs next time. Alright, but that's all for today. Thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been great. Lots of Godzilla discussion. Lots of Pokemon assistive help. So many new people joining today. Let's go find somebody to go raid. And again, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more. Um, when... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to finishing some Godzilla footage later tonight. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's fun. Ah, it's good seeing the Godzilla shorts pop up in the shorts feed. Always makes me smile. Who do we raid, though? Ooh, Brandon R24 is live. Yo! Shiny hunting Heracross. I do love Heracross. I do indeed love Heracross. Also, I love Godzilla. Ah, fellow Godzilla fan. There are so many of us, I love it. I'm I'm I am beyond overjoyed that there are still so many fans of Godzilla. And that we're meeting them. It's just That's why we're bringing back Godzilla footage on the channel. We are we are returning to our roots as a kaiju film channel. <sighs> life is good. Sometimes sometimes life is good. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's go. And, um, uh, can we not redirect Brandon R24? Can we not redirect there? No, okay, we cannot redirect to him. So we're going to need to do this the old-fashioned way of the copy and paste the link. All right. I will see you guys next time. Yeah, tomorrow is going to be Latias hunting. And... I, I want to get that shiny Latias before I get after before my draft league matches happen again, because we need shiny Latias for the Godzilla theme draft team. But I'll see y'all next time.